All right, I think we're in. Hi guys, it's Ashley Donna here, and I am with my brother from another mother, Chris Preston, owner of Functional Fitness Plus, and we're going to talk about how he is inspiring his community. So, hi Chris, welcome to my podcast. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. I would have like a really cool like intro dance version thing happening, but yet to have that. I could show you my dog, but like he's just passed out of sleep on the bed right now. So, but anyway, like you get the vibes. I'm really excited for you to be here. So thanks for, thanks for being here and thanks for being my first guest. And, um, you know, guys, this podcast is all about um, the epic people. So epic is standing for extraordinary people, inspiring communities. And I couldn't think of any other person that I'd want first up on this podcast. And that is Mr. Chris Preston. So Chris, you are my brother from another mother. How long have we known each other for? Five years, maybe? Yeah, maybe a little bit. In, yeah, it would have been probably 2015. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, geez, it feels like five years. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so i've known each other for like three and a half years almost four years now and that's right because i just opened my studio and i'll be hitting four years in september and i think you were just about to open yours when we first met through Correct. so we met through a mentor program with travis jones Trav and Liv Jones, um, who we idolize still and thank very to this day for help getting us off the ground and helping us have the success that both of our businesses have. So if you're listening, Trav, Triv, <laughs> Trav and Liv, <laughs> we love you so much. Oh my God, I'm going to get you to show the Triv tattoo. Can you do that for our podcast people? So this is an ode to Travis and Liv Jones. <laughs> Did you get that in Bali, actually? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, wait, we got that. We After actually the... got that tattoo together. I got another tattoo. I got this love heart tattoo. After and you got trip. the other one. Ah, oh, I remember. Oh, those were the days. Those were the days when we just started now. Gosh, so many things have happened. So, <laughs> so many things like inspiring, awesome things in our business. So. Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you. Otherwise, it'll just be the Ashley show. So I'm going to hand it over to you. And I want you to just give us a background on like, how did you get to where you are? Um, and why did you start Functional Fitness, Fitness Plus? And tell us a little bit about that as well, because I haven't really done too much either. So off you go. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's a good question, because I get asked this quite a lot, how it started, what made you want to do it, etc. And like I never thought this was where I was going to end up. I went to a public school and straight away you're put into the category of, you know, you're going to be a tradie because you're not smart enough to go to uni and you don't have a good BCE score. I didn't know if it's called BCE anymore, but the, your enter score, I think my enter score was like 29 or something. I think I got points just for writing my name on the sheet. <laughs> and I, um, what, I was like, what, like, what is even an entry? Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, we're different in, in New South Wales. So, what is an entry score? Like, your UAI yeah, or something? After you do your year 12 exams, you get a score and that entitles you to like whatever degree. Is it out of 100? Yeah, yeah. And you got 29. Yeah, it's pretty good, hey? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was sort of, I actually lived my life by that enter score. I was like, I can't go and be a physio. I can't go and study something at uni because my enter score doesn't allow me to do that. So I just lived my life governed by this stupid score that I'd gotten from these exams that I didn't even study. Yeah. So I'm like straight out off the bat, finish year 12. It's like, okay, you're going to be a tradie. So I'm trying to find a trade. Ended up getting into roof plumbing after a few months of labouring. Did four years of roofing and just, I don't know how I even stuck out the four years. I hated like, every minute of it during that four years i actually started my cert three and four in fitness so i was starting to be a personal trainer whilst i was still doing plumbing and the government cut me off and said you're doing two cert threes at the same time so i was doing plumbing and i was doing cert three in fitness although i was doing it at night school they literally said you need to choose one or the other oh, wow. so then i was like okay well i've been doing night school for six months i'm not just going to give up three years of my life that i've done for plumbing for an apprenticeship 
So I put it on the back burner with the intention that when I finished my apprenticeship, I would go and get it re-accredited and finish it off. When that time came, the company I did my Cert 3 and 4 in fitness with actually went under. So when I called to get my records, they didn't have them. Wow. So I, did, I had to go and do Cert 3 and 4 again in fitness, which took like another, oh, I think it was like just over nine, nine, 12 months to do that again. So if you want to know anything about the Cert 3 and 4, just let me know because I've done it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know me, you know that I hate doing things twice. Yeah. So it was frustrating, but that's just the way it goes. Um, and then I just sort of got involved into like network marketing. That was like my first exposure to like business and what's out there in this world. And yeah. when I was doing that, there was a lot of work around leadership and personal development. Like I didn't even know you could read a book that would add value to your life because all the books I've read in school were like some bullshit story about war that wasn't even real. And we have to write an essay on it. <laughs> then I like opened my whole inner world to this like whole different world of books and education that's out there that I'd never been exposed to before. And it just sort of went from there. I just kept growing. I kept developing. I sort of worked my way out of that networking group and then decided, okay, it was time to do something off my own bat because I've always wanted to have my own business. So then I started PT in just like a box 24 hour gym um, in the local community. And then I started in like January, 2015. And I just said to myself, I was like, yeah, at the end of this year, I want to have like my own studio, but my vision of what my studio was then to what it actually is now is completely 100% different. You know, I envisioned this studio of like, um, like bodybuilders and like bikini model competitors, like this exclusive gym just for them. And mm. it's got this whole exclusive club set up. And then as I got more involved and, you know, I got like, as I was introduced to Travis and Liv and, you know, we spoke about like what's, um, my real potential was and obviously it was you know, I enjoy working with the gen pop more than I would with like an expert here because they're a better client actually yeah. you know, in the long term health results not just like a 12 week stream get a photo shoot and move on to someone else so yeah. um, I never never mapped out in my life that I would have a gym at all and I mean, never had the money I never got to start up I was always broke. Yeah. And always lived week, week by week. Like my phone was cut off every single month. I think Telstra knew my number. They had my number saved in their phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could barely afford petrol. I was 20, 23, 24 years old, still asking dad for like petrol money. And I just knew that she had to change. And I just decided to go all in. I was, yeah. able, to use, I was able to use a tax return. In the previous year when I was doing roofing to get myself an unsecured car loan for 30 grand which I used to start the gym because they wouldn't give me a business loan. I didn't yeah. have the ability, didn't have the length of time in the industry, etc. etc. So the banks didn't want to know me. But I still use that um, paperwork that I had to get an unsecured car loan for 30k and start my gym and then I underestimated overestimated overestimated my costs. So yeah. within Within like four weeks, that thirty k was gone. Yeah, I was like, "Wow, welcome to business." Now you have to work, and mm -hmm. from that day, on, it's just been constant hustle, constant grind, um, just the the normal ups and downs that you go through with business, and mm -hmm. they build character, uh, help build your integrity. And I mean, you can either whinge about things that go wrong, or you can just like stand back up, dust it off, and, and keep moving forward. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you know all of this stuff especially about business like it shapes you it shapes you as a person and you can either become a victim to it or you can um you know become a victor to it remember the victim victor mentality thing and that's what i admire so much about you is that on every situation yeah you might have like your reactive like what the heck is going on or mainly a little bit more explicit than that <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, like that's, that's a half, you know, it only lasts for so long because then you turn it, turn it around and you're like, okay, how can I take responsibility um, for this circumstance? And then, and then how do I know that everything is always working out exactly how it's supposed to be? And then what are the next steps to take knowing that um, I'm always taken care of and then the universe sorts itself out. So I know that, that we, we, 
we've learned so much practical tools around business um, and you've put them in place, which is amazing. And now you have the successful business that you have, and then you've got a successful online business as well. So everything's, everything's going great guns for you. But I, I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about the mindset that you were required to have and that the person that you needed to be in order to get where you are in such a short amount of time. Like sometimes it takes businesses like five, 10 years to even start seeing profit and you've seen profit within the, I think you started to see profit within the first like six months or something. Like you got it really, really, really fast. Um, So tell me a little bit more about like your daily rituals um, your daily rituals, really. Let's start there, actually, because I know yeah. that you've been telling me about them. I want to know more about them. <laughs> um, so one thing I always struggled with was finding a diary that, like, suited me and for what I wanted to get out of a diary on, like, a productivity level and, like, having checklists because I'm pretty, I'm pretty routine. Like, when I have certain KPIs that I need to hit for myself personally, they're like the same every day. So I need to hit them. So I got my system to create me my own diary, which actually schedules me for my full day and prepares me for a whole day. And I schedule my days in every half an hour block, like what I'm doing in half an hour increments from 6am to 5pm to know exactly what I'm doing. And this is all part of my morning ritual. So it's writing out and planning my day every single morning. And then I might go and do that in the infrared sauna, which we have in the gym. And whilst I'm in there, I'll kill like two, three birds with one stone. I'll plan my day. I'll do my meditation. I'll set my like, three big rocks that I'm going to focus on for the day. Yeah. I'll do my gratitude. I'll write down 10 things that I'm grateful for in that present moment. I'll write down 10 mantras. So 10 positive affirmations. Um, you know, I'm going to sort of feed myself and reply for that day that's present. And then I know you're familiar with the Wheel of Life that um, Travis introduced us to. I have down all those categories and I have them with a scale of one to 10. And what I do is I rate myself on the wheel of life categories from one to 10 every single day. And then I know where I'm at. And if I see that leadership for me was like a five yesterday, and then I look back at what I'm going to do for today, I'm like, all right, cool. I need to get my leadership from a five to like a seven today. So what can I do today to be a better leader? And then I set three goals to work towards that. Yes. Amazing. And this is a, a big thing uh, to anyone that might be listening is that you can obviously see and hear from what Chris is saying that there, there, there takes a, a lot amount of discipline to be the person that he is and to have the mindset that he has and then to have the level of success that he has. So, um, you know, nothing has come easy for Chris whatsoever. And I know a little bit more of your story and like, feel free to go into it if you want, but you know, nothing's ever come easy for this guy. And then here you are, um, you know, some people might be like, oh, that just seems a bit excessive. But when you think about it in the long run, what you're really doing is you're setting up freedom for yourself and you're setting up more success for yourself for the future, right? So yeah, in the present time, you might know what's happening every half hour and your little increments and all that stuff, but you're setting yourself up for that long-term freedom and long-term gain, um, which is being able to step further out into the business, you know, open more studios, go further into your um, you know, online business and all that stuff. You're just creating that freedom. So if, can you talk a little bit about that and where you really want to go and what you believe the work that you put in today is, is going to take you? Where is that going to take you? Yeah, for sure. And um, I'll just go back to freedom. And while we're talking about that, because it's funny when you don't have structure, like as routine as I do, you don't have freedom. Because when you're going about the day, just sitting like mindlessly thinking like, shit, what am I going to do? What have I got next? Um, Before you know, like the hours escape from you and they get away further from you. You jump in, you get on site and your staff have problems. So you get to sit with them for an hour and work through them with other problems. And before you know it, like it's 12 o'clock at night and you're doing marketing on your laptop on the couch when you should be in bed with like, you know, your partner, like saying goodnight to your partner. You should be like a part of doing like what your family does, but there comes sacrifice as well. And I didn't have this structure in the first couple of years simply because, you know, yourself, when you're first getting things off the ground, like you have to be that person that does like 18, 20 hour days. Like yeah. um, Tim says it best, like you just have to eat shit for a while. And that's, yeah. that's as simple as it is. Like 
And even when you get three and four years in, you still have to eat shit every now and again, but it's, it's who you become in that process that really determines how well you're going to go. And I mean, business is something where you put in the work now and, you know, five, 10 years from now, it gets to a point where you sort of semi want it to be, but being an entrepreneur, I don't think you ever sort of get comfortable too. Like if I had have said three years ago, um, where I am today, I probably would have thought back then like, shit, I'm like retired. Like that's all I need. But now my mindset's like, okay, cool. Like how can we add more value to more people, grow our community even more? Hence why we started the online business because now we can touch people Australia wide that we can help with our services. So, um, you know, being that entrepreneur and always looking for a challenge is something that I thrive off. I, I hate being bored. I mean, I got bored a year and a half ago and we started the Pilates model when, um, I don't know if you remember when we started our Pilates model, we got these <laughs> machines in like, it's because I just got bored of where we were and where we were up to. So I was like, shit, I need a new challenge. Just start Pilates. So we started fitting out rooms and we did this Pilates model and it grew so fast. We had, I think we did like you nearly know, 200K in a Pilates model, like in its first eight months. And then all of a sudden, like we lost our staff. The passion for it wasn't 100% there because it wasn't like something that aligned directly with me. It's like what That's strength it. training. So I found it difficult to have the motivation to push through and make that work. Um, you know, we tried having different managers and other people to like get in and look after it, but we do live in an area which is not very um, saturated with trainers and, and instructors. So, you know, we ended up pulling the pin and we closed it down. It ended up costing us a few grand to close it down, but yeah, um, you know, like I could have easily just, you know, whinged about it, but instead, you know, you just pick yourself back up you keep going and, you, um, yeah, head down, butt up. Exactly, exactly. Um, so you just touched a little bit about like, um, it didn't work, the Pilates studio didn't work because it wasn't in alignment. And that's something that I've just been uh, following through for the last year. And, um, and as a result, when I've made the commitment to live a life from alignment, there were certain things that were just falling apart in my life. And I was like, what the fuck is actually happening here? Like I, I'm, I'm living like a heart filled, um, soul, soul aligned life. Why is all this stuff going like tail up in a way? And, um, one of, one of my mentors, Kat has said to me that, if, if it's not in alignment, like the universe is going to just like let it go and just like literally rip it apart for you because it's not in alignment. And if you've made the commitment, if you're like woken up and you're like, you know, it's like the universe being like, well, now that you're woke, <laughs> um, you don't need this stuff anymore because it's no longer like ego driven. It's, you know, that's, it's a much more of a deeper level. Yeah. So I, I want to touch a little bit more about alignment and, why you feel like it's so important to live a life that feels true to you and, and, and especially in your business um, and, to, and to make your business decisions from alignment. So can you touch a little bit more about how do you know like when you're in alignment, um, what has happened to you when you haven't been in alignment, I know with the Pilates studio, and then also like touching on a bit more about like how living with a life in alignment, how much, what has that given you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome question because I, to a lot of people, like, uh, you know, I'm six foot two, I've got tattoos, a couple of little muscles here and there and can, you know, might not, a lot of people don't get to see the other side of me. And if you do know the other side of me, I'm a very spiritual person. And, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. Like the, the universe sends you signs every single day and it's just dependent on whether your self-awareness is heightened enough so that you can actually acknowledge the sign and then take an action on it. Um, you know, we look at like numerology, if you go, we could talk about this for a whole nother webinar, but <laughs> um, talking about like coming from alignment and like just getting in tune with your gut because your gut's never wrong. It never lies. You might feel that a staff member might be a little bit distant, a little bit off and you might be thinking to yourself like, hmm, like I should talk to them on a, nah, they'll be right, like everything's okay. And then three months later, you find out like they've turned on you and they've taken like 20 clients. And it's like, shit, I knew that three months ago and I should have acted. Yeah. And the number one thing I've learned from like, being intuitive and listening to your gut with like whatever you're aligned with is that you have to take action straight away. You can't sit on it and think that it's going to get better. Think that it's going to be back to where it was because something's going to miss. 
And then the sooner you can realize that everything that's happening around you is a direct consequence of like an action you've taken, the quicker you can get on with it. Because it's easy to sit back and be like, oh, that staff member's doing this or my bookkeeper hasn't done that. And it's like, well, hang on, like, have I given it my, have I given them my 100% so that they don't make that mistake? Yeah. And nine times the answer is no. And then you have to go back to yourself and put in a better system or a better process so that that doesn't happen again. But the sooner you can take ownership for everything that's going on, the sooner you can move on and start to have some success. Exactly. And again, just talking a little bit more about um, the, the, when you feel it in the gut, initially you've got to take action on it straight away. Now, what happens when people can feel it in the gut and they're just really, really scared to and they're just petrified to? What, do, you, do you have any tips on how to like put the fear to the side and just do it anyway? Or, um, yeah, do you have any tips on like what would happen if they let the fear overtake? Because I feel like if you let the fear overtake, your life would just turn to shit, really, because <laughs> you, you went yeah. against your gut. Yeah, for sure. It um, probably comes down to the type of situation as well, but a lot of mine can be directly related back to this one question that I asked myself. And if, if you knew now what you knew back then, would you still do X? And it's either a yes or a no. And the quicker you can distinguish that, the quicker you can take an action on what you need to do. So if you knew what you knew back then about staff member xyz would you still hire them and if the answer is no it's like okay well then we need to make that decision and you need to learn to fire fast and hire slow like, yeah. and yeah you just get better at that but the only thing that that's like being an entrepreneur i think that's that's that fear that everyone dreads and lets get in the way and they let it bog them down it creates the anxiety which you know brings cortisol up and we can't function properly so that's why it's so important to Hit those daily rituals, like revisit you why, like why are you doing this and look into your vision as well. So if you're looking into like a five-year vision, you can just quickly look back and say, okay, well, with what I'm doing now, does this align with where I want to be in five years? Does this, can this person help me get to where I want to go in five years? And if the answer is no, then you can get rid of that fear because you know it doesn't align with where you want to go in the future and you just have to take action. Like yeah. you can't sit there and procrastinate. You just have to come out the blocks um the first few times man like i sat on things for months and months and months yeah. but now as soon as they come up like you just hit them on the head and it's all part of it like it's going to happen to everyone i wouldn't expect anyone to just come out first year of business and just like start like being in tune with the gut and hitting everything like it's all part of the experience um it's all part of the challenge and you get a lot of growth from it yeah you do so then uh, speaking about growth if someone was, um, if someone was just starting out in business, five years down in business, or twenty years down in business, so they're along the business journey, I want to know what your top three pieces of advice would be for someone that is just wanting to create change and wanting to step up as a leader and wanting to really inspire the community that, the, that they're speaking to at the moment, regardless of where they're at in their business in terms of like, regardless of their time or where they're at. So um, I look at you as a very inspiring leader. And so what do you think are your top three qualities, I guess would be, and I think you would replicate that as advice anyway. <laughs> Yeah, um, like advice is you have to let go of your ego. Um, regardless of how good you think you are and how much you know in a certain field, it's so easy to start a gym and all of a sudden it's like, I know everything. Yeah, I know everything. I know how every exercise works. I know this, I know that. And by doing that, you start blocking out your self from its ability to grow. And the way to lose that ego is just to get into some um, development. So you need to be like listening to podcasts daily. So my first tip would be to like drop your ego. The ego has to be gone. Like you are not the best at like what you do. There are others out there that are better than you. And even if you are the best at it, you need to make the other people around you better than yourself because your team needs to thrive. Um, you also need to be doing like daily development, like reading books. And for me, that sort of comes back to ego as well, because a lot of people, I say to them, like, oh, here's a good book. You should read this. It'll help X, Y, Z. Like, I'm not reading a book. Yeah. I don't 
time to read a book. It's like, well, if you don't have half an hour to read like at least 10 pages a day, then you're not going to make it. It's as simple as that. So that should be a part of like the daily rituals as well. Um, and the third one, if you want to become more of like an inspiration and a leader is just to be more transparent, genuine, and share your story more with others because no one gives a fuck like how much money you have. No one gives a fuck what no. car you drive, how fucking shiny your watch is. Um, here's the passion with me coming out now. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, like people want to know what you failed at. Everyone wants to know like how far you've come because nine times out of 10, you're going to relate to that person on some level. Like I know that when I speak to people, I can relate to a lot of people because I've been where they are before especially like younger PTs that are coming through, like you know exactly where you've been. So your ability to share your story is super powerful because it builds trust with like your marketplace, makes you a better leader and it just goes to show that like you're human because yeah. a lot of people sort of self-sabotage themselves. They think they're not good enough, they're not smart enough. Yeah. Um, or they say like, oh, he's lucky, he got in at a good time. Like yes. people, people that call me lucky, um, I don't really have much time for but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, you only know what you know, and that's their mindset and that's their perspective. Yeah. But if you sat down and had a chat about your story, I bet you their um, mindset would completely flip. Yeah. Just what popped up to me for me just then is is is, a, is just something the word energy, and I wanted to touch base uh, around that because obviously like I believe that where energy flows money will grow so money will go um, and what do you do each day I know that you spoke a little bit about your morning rituals about how to be your leadership self and what do you do um, each day to be able to get into that energy and um, already like you have a very attractive personality like people organically drawn to you because like you're real you have like the ego is lowered like you're you're very humble like people uh, you're like a magnet people want to want to be connected to you and I know that you know obviously with your background with like starting out um not starting your business but before all of that with your story like you weren't always like that you're a bit of a you're a bit of an angry an angry boy <laughs> um <laughs> So, so I want to talk about energy. How did you transition your energy into um, what it is now? And also, um, have you noticed that when you put energy into something, then it becomes easier, like the money or the clients just sort of magnetize to it when you're really aligned and passionate with it? Yeah, for sure. Like, I find the, the positive affirmations really just help me get into that mindset and I read a book it was one of it was my very first book so if you're listening and you're looking for a book that's gonna open up your awareness a bit and help you start like a bit of a personal development journey it's um it's called the monk who sold his Ferrari by Robin Sharma um once I read that book my life did a complete flip I changed the way that I literally saw everything and before that like you're right, like I was so angry at the world. Uh, my auntie was, she was a real estate agent. She was murdered when, she, when I was 15. She was showing someone through a house and was murdered. So she was just doing her job. Um, and that rattled me for a long time. And, you know, I was just angry at everyone. And I just, I had this mentality that like, yeah, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, who gives a fuck? And I still have that mentality now, like a zero fucks attitude, but I don't use aggression to show it. And that's the difference. Like you can still like not give a fuck about the little things that go on, mm. um, not get angry about them. Whereas before I had this attitude of like, you know, I'd be cutting someone off on the road and I'd flip them the bird and tell them to fuck themselves. And like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> going nuts at someone like for no apparent reason. Yeah. Whereas if someone cuts me off, I'm like, yeah, it's okay to get a bit frustrated and whatever, but you just say to yourself, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're human. Yeah, exactly. There's just different ways of looking at that, taking those three breaths and expanding that stimulus gap so you yes. can make a educated decision around mm -hmm. what you're going to do rather than a, a reactive decision. I think yeah. too, many, too many of us are reactive, not just in business, but in life in general. We're constantly on the reaction. Like if something's going on, boom, it's your fault. Like everyone, 
what people don't realize is that every time you point the finger at someone, you've got three fingers pointing back at yourself. Yeah. And everyone points the finger. You need to look back at yourself and make sure you've covered all your bases before you start pointing fingers. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's a good analogy. I didn't know. Who taught you that? One figure yeah. pointing at someone else, <laughs> three at you. That from, uh, from Greg Plitt. He, um, I don't know if you know Greg. He's, he was like the, one of the number one fitness models in America. Oh, wow. the most cover magazines. I met him three years ago in Queensland at a seminar and literally like two or three months after that he got hit by a train and passed away. So wow. I was really, um, really fortunate to meet Greg when I did and um, listening to some of his content that's still on YouTube now he's very aggressive but he's also straight to the point and um, I suppose I used to like watch his YouTube clips every morning as like a motivational pump up mm. because you know, he calls you out. He calls you out on your bullshit. Yeah. And bullshit stories that we tell ourselves that sabotage our results. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we're going to leave it there. Uh, Chris, my brother from another mother, thank you so much for your time and your amazing insights around not only just business, but around the mindset. Like you, you'll, you'll notice that, um, you know, it's not just business talk. We're talking about like how, inspiring you are and how and how like your mindset and your daily rituals and how you think about yourself and how you think about others and your energy just as you are like that is what is going to inspire more and more people to follow your content and to buy from you and to make your business more successful so i know that it all starts from you and you are just like the epitome of the epic person so thank you so much for your time and um you know i'll see you I'll see you around. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Thanks, Ash. All right. See ya. Bye.